yeah. you too. Okay. Tell the story. <laughs> you know, we just yeah. basically finished. Ah! Um, yeah, yeah. they're getting into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're getting in. <laughs> so we just finished a taping of tea time. Um, and I wanted to ask you girls, do you. Would you say that being um, trans, um, Shigeja, would you say that being trans and trying to get into the music industry has, um, has its own set of challenges? It does, it does, it, it actually does. Like, um, like, like we discussed before, it's really, really hard for um, women of trans experience to get through the door. Um, we have the stigma that they don't think that, um, that, um, being in our presence is going to to um, solidify them. So we have we have all the talent in the world, but that talent isn't enough because of, of the shame and the stigma that they have when they perform with us. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. We should be uh, performing right alongside Beyonce and Kanye West's while he's playing games. Yes. We should be right there performing with them to change the narrative because it's our celebrities that we put into place that are supposed to change this narrative, that are supposed to inspire our people. So when you got people who are just about themselves in this and we've uplifted them to the point that now they're the celebrities, now they're, they're stars, they're the main ones objectifying us and putting us down and don't realize that trans and gay people and lesbians, we're the ones that buy your music. We're the ones that do your hair, we're the ones that do your choreographer, uh, cho uh, choreography. We're the ones that are behind everything in fashion. So it's only right that we take our crown as far as the music and the arts with poetry and all that good stuff. What about you, Juliana? Have you had any challenges um, being trans in the music industry? I think it's been... Initially, I felt like it was really difficult because I kind of felt like I didn't have a model of support. I felt like... Um, Especially when I first started DJing, because DJing is such is already such a male field. Yeah, even it's a very just, male dominated. Even game. just like women generally, like cis women, people think of as jokes as DJs. Uh -huh. And so you already have that battle to overcome in that sense. But then it's also I because what I do is very like there's so much like DJing and producing is all there's like technical technical stuff and it's kind of a bro culture. And so I feel like for a very long time, and I still have to deal with this. I go to a show and someone books me, and it's actually weirdly the opposite, where people are like, oh, you got booked because you're trans and that's on the trend right now. So, and then I have to, I feel like I have to go, per, I have to go that much more off. And you have just to, to let talent. people know. I have to be better than everybody else, just to be able to get to baseline respect from music bros. And you know, I think it's changing. Um, oh yeah, it's definitely changing. It's changing a lot, and I think, especially in New York, there's a lot of people coming up right now that are really talented. Shout out to Quay Dash, um, who's killing it right now, but yeah. What would, what would be your advice to someone that's trained that wants to break into the music industry? Whether that be DJ, rapper, singer, or whatever. Um, I would say just do you be your own platform. Be your own build your own base because like people at a certain point people had to people had to listen to what I was doing because my support base was I built myself. You know what I'm saying? It was through Tumblr, through nightlife, through going to parties, through the you girls, the ground through up. like yeah, through the ground up. And so even when I didn't necessarily have any support and I wasn't paying my bills with it, you know, I you build it and you build a community and like that means something. So that and means really think, yeah. So that means stop waiting on a record label to try to sign you. You know, build your own support. Especially with the internet now, it's crazy. So you can build your own fan base. Stop waiting to get signed when you can basically sign your own. SoundCloud, yeah, Tumblr. Yeah, SoundCloud, Tumblr. People build are your out own here. Fan base. Yeah. And once you get the following, people, the people will come. You know, you want if the record label is going to be interested in you, they're going to come and seek you out. Don't seek the record label. Let them seek you out. Stay independent. Yes. Like, 
you know, like they stay on in there. Yeah, that bitch is broke as a joke. No, all the money, so they're not even talking to me or addressing me. I'm like, okay, I'll have the spinach dip, and so like literally, Brooke has to repeat the same thing I said, you know, in the same. So basically, we just experience the the benefits of white privilege. Yeah, you know. I don't think it was white privilege. I honestly believe I just walked in the motherfucker and act like I owned the bitch. But I asked for table. We don't. We walk like in for table. And I see if it was like 30 minutes later or something. Thank you. No, it literally was like 20 seconds later. You went in after our fox went in. So Jenny is married. Thank you. How did you put that? Huh? He's recording right now? Wait. He's recording. Yeah, he's recording. Yeah. So let's explain what just happened. Okay. So apparently, Fox Giselle and um, and um, Miss Juliana came in and asked and asked us for our asked for a table for all of us because it's what we normally do. We come here and we sit and we conversate. We have good food and we do the tea time after show. And apparently, they told Fox and Miss um, Miss Huxtable here that it was going to take them 20 minutes to 30 minutes to get a table. But I walked in immediately and said. Um, I need a table for seven and she told me sit wherever you want and make yourself comfortable now They're trying to tell me that that's white privilege, you know, but I'm just now, you know It's kind of hurtful to want to I guess you can say I'm Gia's in denial You know what I'm saying or light skin privilege. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I might be in a little bit of denial because I just witnessed it and stuff yeah, right. But yeah, she literally said she, she really did she, she really did so you saw it with your I, eyes. I saw yeah. it. I yeah. saw it with my own eyes. You know, and I honestly believe that's because, you know, I have this big theory of, in life that I just, wherever I go, I walk in like I own the joint. You know, but the reality of it is... The complexion for the protection. I, I mean... It, Gia I, is a great dinner date. Huh? Yeah. Gia is a great no, dinner date. No, don't say that. And, and, even when don't I walk say in, that. Stopping even sometimes when, when I'm... No, that's what I'm saying. saying. Like, I have a habit like, of stopping you know, traffic. I own the place. You know, they're looking at me like when I go into stores, like I'm going to steal something. So they're looking at the shit of my color, you know, they're looking like, she's a, this is a dark woman, I so she may be on drugs, and she may be like a steal, and so I had an experience where I was in a store, and it was me and somebody else of color, and we were in the store, and it was like a 7-Eleven, um, matter of fact, it was a 7-Eleven, and we were in the 7-Eleven, and we were just grabbing a couple things, or whatever, and so, what happened was this man was stealing and robbing them blind, and he was watching us, and so I had only experienced that, watching it on the movie. Like, and I laughed at it, but it was funny. Like, um, like off on, what was that? Don't be a menace to society by drinking gin and juice in the hood. Drinking and, your juice, right? Drinking right. Out. And so how, um, how very much Ladies. the white man was stealing, and they was letting him get away with it. But every time <laughs> a black person came in the store, hurry up and buy it. Hurry up and buy it. And that's so, very true. Yeah, sometimes and it's very true. And I had an experience in it until I was in that particular particular. You're not mindset. eating yourself, right? Well, it's, it's definitely existent, you know. We just had an episode about colorism and skin bleaching, and mm -hmm. just now we had a real life reenactment of what we were speaking about mm -hmm. privileges. Some people see, let's say Fox did bleach. Maybe she'd be able to get the table first. Yes. When Fox asked for the table, the woman told her to wait 30 minutes, basically pushing Fox away. Gia yeah. came in right after and said, Can I get a table? She told her, Sit wherever you like. So that's that's the real day. tea. Modern it is the real colorism. tea. Ooh, it's kind of kind of. We have to address these issues because um, it is sad because I just had to witness it for myself, and I was just saying on the show that I don't feel like it happens to me, and it just happened to me. So I guess it was kind of a slap in the face. I'm kind of, you know, hurt that it happened because I'm not normally, you know, you, you saw how I did. I was like, all right, girl, come on, let's go. You with that's me? That's your privilege. You, you know, I used to be turned away. Uh, that's not true because I have been turned away plenty of times though. You see, and I think we're on, we're on ladies. It already looks we're on. It looks right. Yeah, I mean I'm a I'm a, I'm a living example of uh, you know like I don't wanna get I just wanna having I have a lot of white privilege. You know, I'm undocumented a little bit, right? But I own property. I own property in New York City in Manhattan. I I have a co op apartment, a huge one bedroom apartment in, in Upper Manhattan. And uh, you know People, they will trust me with their wallet, with their children, with their whatever, and it's just like, <clears throat> this, is, this is what I do, what I do. This is this is what I'm all about, you know, black trans lives matter. Because, you know, I cannot sleep at night knowing that, you know, there's so many black and brown trans women that are still homeless. I have met so many black and trans women in their 60s, still homeless. And 
Um, they have to do survival sex. There's no other option. In, in their 60s, that breaks my heart. So, so you know, I'm a living example, you know, that how, you know, white privilege can advance your career, anything. If I wanted to, you know, I try to be as conscious as I want, not to suck up a lot of space because I know the media will gravitate towards me and whatnot. Uh, you know, I was on the cover of El Diario. I became uh, the first trans Latina on the cover of any Spanish publication in this country. And you know, I was like, wow, just like that. It was like it just came so easy when there has been so many black and brown trans women doing the work for many, many, many decades before I even arrived. And we don't even know their names. So that's fucked up. I think I'll make my own success. Can we say this with him? Yeah. Okay, so what did you just say? I said, as much as we go through it about with the, with the colors of men and stuff and how black guys mm -hmm. treat us, you know, horrible and stuff, I absolutely love black men. I've never had I absolutely do. Had my husband, my future husband will be black and, and it's not because of his race or his, I just think black men are more sexier. You know, that's just me. You know, um... Well, it's what, what do you guys it's easy not to think about that. It's very easy, but for me, I, I am in the same situation. The reason, yeah, the only reason I said that was because we were having a side conversation. We were having a side conversation about how I feel, you know, just, you know, saying side note, you know, as much as they do is bad, you know, I just love me a black man, I do, you know. But I was saying that I think that I will settle down probably with a Caucasian man because in the long run, it's going to be, you know, beneficial for me. I, I think that I'm with black guys for sexual reasons, I'm gonna be honest. But they're not good for me emotionally. They try to, they make me feel, they tear me down. So uh, uh, I feel more empowered by Do you feel like you're putting them all in one group though? I guess I never came across a black guy that has that isn't gotten me intellectually. Exist. I have. I've always, been, I have. I've always been open, and I've had a lot of I've had a lot of sexual experiences with black men, and then the black men that I've had intense emotional connections with, they're like, oh, it's like they want to like chill in my house, and I'm like, it's so oh late for God. that. I'm like, I don't do that. I oh the second so it, girls do the that. second it becomes like. I'm like, Netflix and you don't want to go to secret. the bar down the street? I'm like, Sasha, nobody cares about me. They, every, everybody, half they my feel friends, like, ev they feel like because eight they trans know girls at the bar chilling. Everybody's chilling. You're, you and your you dad right. are fucked Laying up. So I'm like, my, the second I'm, that happens, I'm like, child. I, like I, like I don't mind, next one. I don't mind, I don't mind a good stay at home and chill with your man. I really don't. Now, I don't mind, okay, but when, I don't when like, it becomes course, course, when that's for right, us to when stay at home and chill. Yeah. When yeah, it's like, it's totally oh, let's go to the thing. bar, it's my friend's birthday. Let's stay at home and chill because I'm afraid to Right. Be. Right. No, I understand exactly. you completely. I, I, I need like, to meet like, or like I'm uh, afraid the family rage. I'm like, that's so late. I have a southern black family. If I can deal with my family mm -hmm. who tried to call me the right. devil. Right. If I can chill with my family, yeah, you, you can, can bring too. me to yours. I feel like this and right like, here. None of like my this. white boyfriends I've ever had that it's issue. It's fine. Honestly, it's really? just non-black. It's fine until they find out about your trans experience. Like, I can see a guy, he can be like, oh, you're so beautiful, you're a goddess, you're an uh, African-American goddess, oh, 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 you're a queen, and this and the other. As soon as I let him know that this queen is a trans experience, now that's when okay. he stops wanting to take me to the movies. He don't want to take me to the movies. But so his first initial, oh, oh, you look so good. Let's go out, let's hang out. Can I take you to the movies? As soon as I tell, tell him that I'm trans, now that experience has changed, now he don't want to take me out to the movies. Now he just want to chill at my house. Okay. And so that becomes a thing to where cis women go through the same thing, but we go through it at a, at a more um, catastrophic um, type yeah. of number to where, you know, it, it, it kind of like, it changes our experience as women in their eyes. So whereas he probably didn't know we were trans, he was completely fine. But now that we let him know, now in his subconscious mind, he's worried about everybody else knowing the secret that you told him. So now he's going to say, okay, let's just hang out. Let's yeah. Just chill. Yeah. <clears throat> In-house transsexual girlfriends. Right. I think it's getting better with younger guys. I will say that. Really? I honestly that believe. Perception. Let me say something. I, I think it's getting way, especially. I think younger. I think younger black men, and especially in like New York, are they're are more, more chill. A little bit more, not so. I, I, no, it's not crazy. I mean, generally, I'm. But I think it's I'll better. Still, I'll like, still give it to the old. I, like I like the Afro punk boys. I think are down. Yeah. They don't have. You know, maybe there's some stuff, but they're down. I think it's a generation of like kind of. 
But they grew up. They grew up seeing trans women. Yeah, they grew up with that. It's not very easy. Two thousand and sixteen. Look at our stance back then, and look at our stance now. So now they're seeing us more public, right? Before we weren't seeing in any film, any <laughs> at all, right? If, right, we, right? if we were news reporters, we were in the back. Not and yet even again, doing our job. yet again, the and producers are cis and white. The writers, the directors, Wait, everybody's white. You've been talking shocked. about movies and, and um, projects, television and media. We have not given a chance to tell our own story. No, we're, and we're, and we're not going to get the It has to be filtered to the cis we're lens. Not, we're so not what do you guys the opportunity feel? because of the simple fact that, that we're not fighting for. Everything that we ever accomplished, we have to fight for, literally. Like, think about the stone. Right. Like, people forget what we had to do to be And it was trans women here. that started that. Um, yeah. that it was. Right. But why get men to the credit? They forget Obama what we had to do. It was a gay right. Look okay, and now, now here's here's the thing I might opinion with that one. It's being gay. Us as trans. Right, yes, we are trans, but I feel like at the end of the day, if you want to call me a gay, I used to be say I used to be a gay man, then that's fine because at the end of the day, it was the gay people that took us in. It was the gay people that no, we were, no, I, you, you're you, completely wrong on that. We well, took the gays her. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We took the gays not not take not take us in. But what I mean, let me say what I just mean. Mm -hmm. But what I mean by that is that we were the ones that you know before before we realized that we're fish and we can pump anywhere. Where were we at? Mm -hmm. The bar. When everything, you know, you're, you had a best... Um, it's a dominant culture. It's a dominant culture, and it's yeah, we're part of this culture. And I think instead of trying to get people to be like, oh, the LGBT, the teeny out of the LGBT needs to be removed, I think, no, if anything, we need to te teach these new children about what really the trans people did for the mm -hmm. for, for you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, they what see, they, they see care our struggle. Know. They see if our they struggle, are, and a lot of people know. think, they see this bullshit that we go through, and it, it'll make them want to jump in and say, okay, well, a lot of people still hide in their trans, their trans existence. Mm -hmm. and their trans experience because they, they see the shit that we go through. Yeah, and right. we're out here fighting for their rights and fighting for them to get these surgeries. We're fighting for them, period. And like I said, the trans women, this is what we did. I'm going to tell you what the cis women did for us. And I'm going to tell you what we did for, for gay men. Mm -hmm. And it'll knock it out the box. Cis women for us, it was like, oh, this is our sister. Mm -hmm. This is what they did in the beginning. And so that's what pushed us through. And what we did for the gay men, the reason why the gay men are on top right now. It's because every time there was a gay man going in the, in, in, in the woman's bathroom, we're like, oh, oh, leave him alone. That's that's my that's my that's my sister. She okay. So we're bumping the gay in, 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 in the bathroom with this gay man, and we're getting him through. We protect them. Leave him alone. That's our free. Seven. Nobody's doing that for us. Seven. Nobody, not even cis women. Okay. And the gay men are throwing us on the bus. That's are you still smoking this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not that gay. Okay. Eyes. Eyes. Even Eyes. on these sites. They're saying, they're, they're telling the boy. Which I don't know. Why you mess with that trans woman? She got the same thing I got. You might as well mess with me. <laughs> and these are the ones that we're fighting for. No shade. All I gotta do is yeah. look on the internet. It'll be quick, look the on shame. the internet. Yeah. Try to find a man, you'll find out what's going on. It's for real, for real. So are they not gonna take our drink order? In a little while, we're recording, Gia. What does that have to do with He's got to leave in, in like five more minutes. Okay. And then let's we take advantage. We have like 30 minutes already <coughs> of the after show. We have 15 minutes twice. Okay, so okay. I, I, I want to go back to, if I, if I may, about the, the subject of, uh, you know, I'm also, uh, you know, a heterosexual trans woman and I'm black, attracted. So, and it's very conflicting for me. I have to, because, you know, I have to be very careful, you know, not to, um, you know, because I have so much white privilege and stuff like that, so I can get away with so much, and I just, I'm just gonna say that I am conflicted, you know, like, <laughs> because you know I can, I can be, um, I know, there's there's so much uh, eurocentrism in all communities of color, so that they will automatically they work for the lighter skin girl, so I mean like I hate that, I hate that 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 they don't really see anything else but light skin. I, I have gotten guys hitting me up on the, uh, on the tag or whatever, say so like, you have the perfect uh, skin color. I don't know if they ever told you that. I, right? I get all types of... Ridiculous. And complexion, and like, it's all about, it's just like, I feel like, you know, but, but I know that doesn't really do anything to me. Even if I am being uh, fetishized like that, it doesn't do, but I know I can do a lot of harm by fetishizing black men. And period. So I know because you know that's that's just the way things are, the way they work. And things yes. work. Yes. Mm -hmm. Drink orders later. Right. It's your time now. The show. I'm also ready to see order. See you. See you next time. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Bye.